Okay, this is video two. So we have this condition saying a sequence in a metric space X converges to a point if and only if for all epsilon greater than zero. There's a point in the sequence that uh, where all the PNs approach some P. Um, so there's an alternate way to prove if a sequence is uh, convergent, and that's the Cauchy criterion. We know that every sequence that converges is Cauchy, but not necessarily every sequence that is considered Cauchy is convergent. However, in complete metric spaces, such as in the real line, in RK, uh, in general, for all K, we have the fact that Cauchy com implies convergence. So um, what is the Cauchy cr criterion? A sequence P sub, P sub n is Cauchy if for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a capital N in the naturals such that there's a point where we can go further out where all the sequence terms Pn and Pm are within epsilon. So unlike this condition where we know that there's a point in the sequence where we get close to our limit P, here we don't involve the limit. We just know at some point if we have a convergent sequence, then at some point the terms all get close together and approach each other. Um, so in this case we never find the limit, but sometimes we just want to know if a, a limit exists. And uh, this is one way to, to, to find out, out for a sequence. So is it always easy to find if um, a sequence is Cauchy? No, but in some circumstances it is. And that's when we have what I'm going to call a contractive sequence. So a sequence, P sub n, is contractive if P sub n plus 2 minus P sub n plus 1 is less than or equal to C times P sub n plus 1 minus P sub n if for some C in the interval 0, 1. This condition holds for all that. So this is what we call a contractive sequence. And I'm going to prove that every sequence that satisfies this contractive condition is actually a Cauchy sequence. So to that end, first we need a little claim. So first, claim star. If, if a sequence x of n is contracted, then x of n plus 1 minus x of n is less than or equal to c to the n minus 1 times x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And this holds for all n. So I'm going to prove this by induction. Base case. Induction on n. Proof of claim star that is. Base case n equal one. When n equals one, we have x sub two minus x sub one less than or equal to c to the one minus one to the zero times x sub two minus x sub one. Trivial. This holds. Clear. Um, induction hypothesis. Suppose x sub k plus 1 minus x sub k is less than c to the k minus 1 x2 minus x1 for some k bigger than or equal to 1, bigger than or equal to the base case. We want to show that the claim holds 
if we replace uh, n with k plus 1. So we want to show the following. That x sub k plus 2 minus x sub k plus 1 is less than or equal to c to the k times x sub 2 minus x sub 1. This is what we're showing. So let's barrel on. Observe that x sub k plus 2 minus x sub k plus 1 is less than or equal to c times x sub k plus 1 minus x sub k. This holds since this holds, this, this is the definition of a contractive sequence. We said a contractive sequence, we have neighboring terms is less than or equal to C times the preceding two uh, uh, neighboring terms. So here we have the same condition, since X of N is contractive. And this, we see our, our induction hypothesis is right here. We can replace x of k plus 1 minus x of k with c times c to the k minus 1 times x of 2 minus x of 1. And this is equal to c to the k times x of 2 minus x of 1. And that proves the induction step. Hence, the inductive, inductive step holds, and we conclude we conclude what we wanted to conclude that x of n x of n plus one minus x of n is less than or equal to c to the n minus one times x of 2 minus x of 1 for all n. So that proves claim star. So now I'm going to use this claim to prove that any sequence that is contractive is actually a Cauchy sequence. And I think I'll prove that in a second video since since um, this one's getting a little bit long. Okay.